Hi folks, it's Steve here from Analytics in Action. Today I want to give you a beginner's guide to SQL, an introduction to the five most commonly used pieces of SQL code. So the goal is to teach you five core SQL concepts that are relevant to data analysts. So these are the actions or tasks that data analysts do over and over again on a daily um, on a daily basis. It's the stuff that if you learn, you'll get the sort of most bang for, the, for your buck. So these key tasks are returning data from a single table, so using the select statement, filtering records using a where clause, joining two tables using a join clause, sorting data um, using the order by clause, and returning unique values using the select distinct statement. In this demonstration, I'll run this code on Microsoft SQL Server. I think I'm running SQL 2014 at the moment, but it'll run on all versions of uh, SQL Server, uh, and it should run on most open source databases such as MySQL. So the code that allow you to install the sample database and that also contains the uh, code used in this tutorial is available in the link below. Okay, so the um, first thing with uh, the first statement that we're going to run is the select all um, statement. So this is the most common um, query that you'll uh, run. So it consists of one key bit here, which is select star, and the star means all columns. And then we've got from sales, and sales is the table that we want to return all the data from. Um, there's this one additional uh, piece of code up the top here, which says use intro SQL and then go. So what this does is, is, is it refers to the database that you want to extract the data from. So for example, if we look up here, we see the database that we're currently connected to is called master. So if we run this now, it'll get confused. It'll say invalid object name sale. So it doesn't know where the sales table is. But if we use here this uh, use statement, what we see is it then clicks across and it's referring to the intro SQL table. So that allows us to always, if we combine those two pieces of code together, we're always referring to the database that we want to pull the data from. So as you can see here, it returns all of the, all of the rows and columns within the database. And we can see down the bottom here, there are 22 rows. So the problem with the select all statement is that it returns all the data from the uh, table. And that's, that can be fine uh, a lot of the time, but if you've got a really, really huge table, and that's really common these days to have hundreds of thousands or millions, or in some cases, billions of rows of data, that can return more data than is useful, or it could just put a lot of stress on your, on your server. So you may only want to see a subset of that data. So what we can also do is specify the columns that we're after. So in this case, we're going to return the category column and the sales price column. So what you'll see is that category here doesn't have these square brackets around it, but sales price does. So the reason why we're using square brackets here is because we've got a space between sales and price. And if we try and run it like this, SQL will get a little bit confused because it thinks sales is an actual column name when in reality it's sales price. So there we go. Now we'll run this and again we're using the use intro SQL to refer to the database. But if you look up into this left hand corner, we're already actually within intro SQL. So this isn't necessary. So we can run it with it. That's fine. Or in this case, we could run it without it because we're already inside the database. So that returns the two columns. Okay, another really useful task is to be able to uh, sort a column in either ascending or descending order. So what we can do here is we return all of the columns from the sales database and we're going to order it by sales price in descending order. So let's select that. So here we see sales price, that's the highest price, and that's the lowest price at the bottom with nulls being at the very bottom. So what you can also do is order it in ascending order, and we get the opposite. And if you 
have nothing, I think by default it'll, it'll order it in ascending order. Okay, often you want to filter records down to a um, to just a subset of the total um, table. So, you know, very much for the same reason as I mentioned before, often these tables have huge amounts of data, but you're only really interested in a, in a subset of those rows. So what you can use is what we call a wildcard. Um, so a wildcard um, allows you to substitute zero or more characters in a, uh, uh, in a, in a where clause. So essentially it allows you to uh, provide some flexibility. So for example, if you have cam percentage, it will then return, you know, cameras, camera, camera reel, and then that uh, allows you to uh, just provides a bit of flexibility in your in your querying. And there we go, we've got just cameras being returned. So often uh, databases consist of multiple tables. Actually, nearly always um, a professionally built database will consist of multiple tables. And to return the data that you're after, you want to connect up those separate tables and return a, uh, a mix of data from them. So the key thing to remember when you're joining multiple tables together is that you need to refer to each of those tables in a correct uh, way. So the reason for that is that often two separate tables might have a column with the same name. So you need to specify the table and the column that you uh, want to return. So what we have here is we're going to join two tables. We're going to join the sales table and the staff table. Uh, so we're going to return the first name from the staff table, the last name from the staff table, the sales, sorry, the category from the sales table, sales price from the sales table, account manager ID from the staff table, account manager ID from the sales table. So this is an example where we've got the same column in two different, uh, in two different tables. So if we remove this out and try and run this query, it'll say there's an ambiguous column name. In fact, it's already done that. So you see here the little hover over ambiguous column name. So that's why we add in the table name as uh, when we refer to the column. So the key piece of uh, information here, or the key piece of code here is what we call the inner join statement. So we've just referred to the columns as we've done above, we referred to the table as above, and what we're going to say here is we're going to join the sales table to the staff table. This is called an inner join, so an inner join joins the uh, two tables where the, um, map, the IDs match on both sides. So what we're doing is we're joining the staff table on the sales table, and we're going to join it on the account manager ID. So where there is the same account manager ID in both tables, it will return all of the results. And there we go. So what we can see here is the matching account ID. So that's why it returned it. And there we go. That's returned the results where the account manager ID is matching in both tables. Okay, so the final uh, useful statement here is the select distinct uh, statement. So this allows you to return unique values from a column. So here we're going to return all of the unique values from the category column within the sales table. So let's highlight that. So this returns the seven unique values within the category column. Okay, so that wraps the course. Um, those are the five core SQL concepts that are uh, most relevant to data analysts. If you found this course useful, you might also want to take a look at my more comprehensive 60 minute version that's on Udemy. So you just click on the uh, link below and anyone who accesses the course from that link will automatically get 50% off. So this covers 30 of the most common Transact SQL statements used by data analysts.